1969 Ford Galaxy Hardtop by AMT Ertl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again Blue Oval fans and welcome back to another Monster Hobbies model car unboxing video as we take a look at the 1969 Ford Galaxy Hardtop. This of course is another one of those amazing model kits by AMT Ertl that you don't want to miss. So before we do that, this car has been reissued a bunch of times. So let's actually take a look at the different box arts before we go down and check out our great model car review. A lot of people tend to forget that the muscle car craze started with the very big cars, and this 1969 Ford Galaxy is no exception. This monster has a big 429 cubic inch engine in it as an option, and it looks very good. And as we saw in our video box tops just now, that this kit has been released a few times in the past, but not too many. However, there were some significant like drag racing stuff and all kinds of cool things in here. So there are some really cool big block options in our Galaxy. So this is a very nicely put together model on the box art. Again, another one from AMT Ertl under RC2 back in the day. If we turn our box up this way, let the parts rattle a bit, <laughs> we can zoom in and see the interesting detail on this kit. There's the Ford engine, which is painted black. They wanted a Ford engine and they wanted painted black, I guess. Okay, and then there's our in interior bit here and the side profile of the car. And then here we get again the three-quarter front angle from, of course, our box top. Now just moving this back a little bit. Tilt this up on this end, and of course you can see it's a new kit because it's got barcode on it. And crash again. And on this side of the box we have a skill level 2 for ages 10 and up. Glue and paint is required. This model kit came out in 2004 from RC2. Official licensing by Ford. Okay. <laughs> so, whoop, turn it around upside down. Here we go. We lift off the box top. And what do we find inside? We find the very basic 69 Galaxy XL hardtop instruction sheet. And there was a Buick that came out. 66 I think anyway it's got the same kind of instructions actually I do believe it's 69 Riviera if my memory serves me right of course you can see it's just very basic we'll get into instructions in a bit the decal sheet which I'm going to keep a mystery till the end here's our nice Ford body Ford body you can see the galaxy Cool. Did any of you actually own a real Galaxy? If so, let me know in the comments below right now. Anyway, there's our chrome in a nice big baggie. And then we've got our clear glass. Now I have looked at this a few times. So here we've got all our parts out. And based on the vintage of this kit, as we saw in our box tops just a little while ago, you do know it's like from the 60s, possibly original introdu in <laughs> introduced originally in 69. Look, you get two intake manifolds on here. Uh, two carburetor and single carb. Watching your carbs. <laughs> There's our interior and our underpan. This has a screws in it for the promo style. And then all our little gray parts, the hood, firewall, camera going out of focus, there you go, that cool dashboard, and what's going on here, firewall, steering wheel, and our tires. So I'm going to clear this box out of the way and then we'll just take a look at our instructions. Here we have our instruction sheet for 69 Galaxy XL Hardtop. This is the 1969 reprint of these instructions. And I was right, there was a 69 Buick in here. 
a Buick Riviera. Now I do have that kit on my shelf, but it's like two inches away from being complete, so I'm not doing a review on it. Unless somebody else has one somewhere they want to submit, or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, zoom this back, and I'll just open up the sheet. Now I bought this May 22nd, 2004 for $14.99 at PM Hobbies in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Okay, so here is a uh, look at all the parts that come with the kit. And they're all blacked out here. And they've got some part numbers on here. So you really had to, you know, look at one thing and look at the next and try to figure out what was going on. I don't know. Very basic instructions. So we'll just open this up here. It's almost like Johan style back in the day. And then uh, we'll just crank the camera back in a little. Pardon as a mess. Important, read these points before you begin. These are also like the old AMT Star Trek decals. In fact, they have that same kind of weird, bold sci-fi lettering in here. Okay, so here's our engine. And this is the custom one, which I show you first. Because who wants to build a stock Ford? I mean, come on, right? <laughs> anyway, and there's our stock engine. So I'm just going to... Oh, interior and body... Okay, so instead of looking at this as one big monster, I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit, and we'll see how it all goes. And here we have our engine block for the custom one, which is going together. So we've got a right and left hand engine block, and then we have the big front cover, as well as the pulleys. This looks like it's for the single overhead cam type Ford engine, which we've seen in some of these other reviews. You've got two cylinder heads left and right. These really awesome valve covers going on here. This is our dual carburetor uh, intake manifold. So this one's really putting on the carbs. <laughs> There's our oil pan. Our oil filter glues up in the front. We've got a fan going on to the fan belts and alternator. And then you can put on these fuel injector manifold as well. I guess I'm past that when we were looking at the parts. And then there's a radiator hose that'll go to the radiator. You also get these cool air cleaners on here for your carburetors. Now let's take a look at the old man stock engine. And now for you sophisticated Ford model kit builders out there looking to build your 69 Galaxy. We of course have a smaller motor here. <laughs> All right. Uh, chrome valve covers, cylinder heads, two stock exhaust manifolds, the engine block again, left and right hand side, oil filter popping in, oil pan. You get a different front cover, more of the tame, sophisticated style, I am afraid. And then our water pump, our pulley and our fan, the alternator going on, the radiator hose, and the single carburetor. This is the rather thin version of this engine. Then we've got our coil and our air cleaner. Here we're going to just look at the interior and the body, both these little segments here together. So we have our interior tub molded as one piece, which is typical for a kit made in 69. A stock floor shift, which will pop in there, or the optional custom floor shift with a little rubber booty down there. Uh, the dashboard, and then we have an option of the custom steering wheel or the stock steering wheel. I do believe the stock steering wheel has a horn ring in it. And then looking at our one-piece body, we've got the one-piece glass going into a pretty much one-piece interior with a one-piece firewall gluing on the front and our radiator wall. Then we get into this panel, which is our chassis, or maybe our chassis I don't know, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so our chassis is a one-pan, one-piece, one-pan, almost promo style with little holes in the back for those screws to go into. Of course, we're using chassis pins instead of screws, because we're more sophisticated. Anyway, you don't want to screw it up. <laughs> our metal axle goes into these rear wheel backs, which go into your stock tires, or your choice of the custom tires, which I believe one set is probably Firestone. The other set is probably those Goodyear Polyglass GTs that we all know and love. The stock wheel covers will pop in there, and there's also these cool Cobra wheels, as they call them. And then there's these little stub axle blocks, so you can lower this thing too, if you want it as a lowrider. Or flip it around and have them raised for sort of a, for your dragster there with those velocity stacks popping through the hood. And then what, what else? 
exhaust system, stock only. Glues in on the ends of the pipes and goes to your stock manifolds. Or if you want the big headers, these custom pipes go... Sorry, big headers. You want the custom pipes, they'll go off the sides here from the headers. So let's take a look at our final assembly. And here we have the final assembly. <laughs> okay, so we have a hood. And you can cut a hole in it and glue this hood scoop over the top for those velocity stacks or the big double two-barrel carburetors. And it slips right into the body here. There's those chassis pins, because we don't use screws anymore. Posh! It's <laughs> so passe. And there's our battery we paint in here and glue onto the radiator wall. Now, I do believe with Fords, they would be black across this, as well as black on the firewall. Um, you can always look that up in your research. The front bumper and grill will glue on there. And the rear bumper has red tail lights, which will glue on. And then the whole thing glues onto the back. And there you have your 69 Ford. And that completes our look at the 69 Galaxy XL hardtop instruction sheets. And now let's look at our plastic components. And here we have our beautiful 1969 Ford Galaxy hardtop body. And this is quite a cool kit. We've got our tunnel roof in here, which was popular style back in the day. And then turning this on to the side, another popular thing was these Coke bottle fenders. And then we've got our little Galaxy emblem here, the door handle molded in, side turn signal lamps, and a, a little piece of trim here that says 429 right in the front. Let's just take a look at that. So can you see it? Oh no, it says 429. I took my glasses off and stuck my eyeball right against it. <laughs> anyway, so we got the vent in here, which was soon to be covered by the hood coming into the 70s on our car design. And then we've got our windshield wipers glued on there. They're glued, molded in place. There's the fuel door off the side. Now, I did sand the body down, so there's a bit of this fine plastic dust <laughs> in the door and along the top of the trunk, and I can't really get it out. I could try to get it out with a hobby knife. I'd like to try to get it out with a little wire brush, but I don't know. There is a bit of a sink mark right in here, which is a tricky spot to get at. Actually, maybe it's not too tricky. Little finger in the sandpaper there. No mold marks inside on the roof, which is nice. And again, here you can see all the pegs and everything. All in all, this is actually a pretty decent casting. I do believe there would have been some flash on it. Now we also have our hood here, which I haven't cut the hole in because I want to build the old man's Ford. <laughs> you can see a nice fit and finish on the hood. And then underneath we've got all our bracings. And again, you got that big indentation of where you're going to cut your hood out, which is kind of a pain for us a posh stock builders. Because it would be nice to have that filled in. I guess you could fill it with putty, but meh. Anyway, there's the sink marks under the hood and mold marks, which you'll have to fix as well. It's got neat little cute hinges on here, but watch out that they don't snap off. Anyway, so there is the body for our Ford Galaxy. And next up we have our interior tub. And as you can see, this is sort of like our 69 AMX from Johan where you have all the detail molded right into the floorboard and you just drop in a dash and a steering wheel and your gear shift lever and you're good to go. Now, bringing this up to the camera, you can see that it does have some nice detail on those door panels, although because this is a tub, they didn't really have any good way to put in cool window winders like this, like you do with the separate panels of later kits. However, it does still look nice. And it is nice that you don't have to, you know, muck around with seats and everything. You can just paint this with spray paint and then come in and carefully cut around with your paintbrush and do these carpets on the floor. There's no mold marks sitting on the bottom. A little bit of debris in here, which you could easily scrape away. Again, quite nice. It's got the little hook tabs to lock under in the body there. Underneath, there's a little bit of a disturbance of some kind of mold marks, but you can sand those out. Looks like two little holes here you could drill in and put in a roll bar somewhere. But still, overall, quite nice for such a little tiny interior. 
And then out of the last of the big pieces, we have our chassis pan sitting here. And as you can see, it's pretty basic. Up here in the inner fender aprons, there's no detail. The cross brace is there, of course. And then here we have the holes which go through for those screws. But on the underneath is a different story. Here we have a full perimeter frame. We have our rear axle and our mufflers all molded in. The mold detail is nice on this. You get a little washboard effect on your mufflers. This, I do believe, is... Well, this is a gas tank, of course. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this... Is this like a big muffler across the back? Let me know in the comments below. I don't... Because it's sort of like, is this another gas tank or what is this? I don't really have too much detail in the 69 Ford Galaxy. But anyway... Okay, let's bring this up to the camera, though. Look at how nicely detailed this is, even though it's a screw bottom. I mean, nice detailed painting you could get in there. It's even got these nice uh, supports going off your rear axle. Your springs and all that would be underneath somewhere. But of course, because it's molded as one piece, you can't really tell. I do believe there's a lot of flash in here because there's a seam line that comes down and then goes out. So I put sandpaper on my thumb and just went like this until all that stuff disappeared. I think I did a pretty decent job. There's still a little bit of it, but it's going to get covered by your wheels. And of course, the blackout paint would go into here and here and here and here so that nobody sees the body color through the wheels. Now, when I set out to make this video, I didn't expect to make it so short and sweet, but these are all the rest of the gray parts right here, and I was able to fit them all right in frame. Now, I know I usually zoom in and all that stuff, but I couldn't resist to see if this would actually work. So here we have our air cleaner for the stock version, the rear wheel backs for either the front or the back, I'm not sure, I have to turn them over. There's a radiator hose with a bit of flash on it. There's our two pins to lock everything together in the back. Two more wheel backs. One of the steering wheels. Actually, I'm not sure. I thought the stock one had a horn ring, but they both are um, three spoke apparently. One's just longer than the other. There's our shift lever. The intake manifold for the velocity stacks. Two license plates here, solid plastic ones. The exhaust headers, or not the headers, but the dumps underneath. There's the headers for the custom. The alternator, the two carburetors are here. Uh, one of the steering wheels, the firewall, the dashboard, and the radiator with the radiator support. There's that big hood scoop if you're going to chop a hole in there. Two pipes or hoses. There's all those lowering blocks, the stock manifolds, the stock front engine cover, the water pump, the battery, left and right hand side of the engine with the transmission on, as well as the belts for the stock version, the cylinder heads for the stock version, the cylinder heads for the custom version, the big fan belts for the custom version, your choice Oh, no, that's the single intake manifold for the stock version, and then the dual carburetor one for the custom. Looks like a distributor here, tiny one. And then we've got a coil, and what is that? Generator or something? Something to hook up onto one of the pulleys. Anyway, so there's all our parts. Now, I am just going to take a select few here to bring up to our camera. Well, I move this out of the way. Oh, there's our engine. Okay, so look at the intake manifolds and the transmission case. You can see the nice detail on all of these. Considering, again, 1969 technology, these are good parts. I really do like this uh, dashboard. Pardon me. Dashboard has all the instruments and everything right in the one thing, and then it's just glove box all the way on the other end for your passengers. Okay, I'm going to wrap this part up quick but there's the fuel log going all into all the different uh, little velocity stacks I do believe actually this is a fuel injection setup of some description but anyway still pretty cool and what else let's take a look at the firewall here firewall looks cool not quite sure what this big long blob is in here it almost looks like it shouldn't be there but then there's rivets heads in here following the blob 
So I don't know, is that a gigantic uh, wire harness of some weird Ford description? If you know what that is, let me know in the comments down below. Now we take a look at my favorite part of all the model kits, which of course is the chrome. Because in the future, everything is chrome. <laughs> anyway, there's our front grill and rear bumper. As well as the four hubcaps sitting there and then we have these velocity stacks which we'll see in a minute there's a custom grill in this much like a, a George Barris Gene Winfield type affair pretty cool there's the uh, tops of the little four barrel carburetors for the custom version <coughs> these cool wheels that are in here a shift lever the stock valve covers the chromed oil pan and then the valve covers for that big massive single overhead cam version. Um, these things. <laughs> the front cover for the single overhead cam and the fan. So let's just uh, lift these up here into the camera. You can see the nice detailing on those custom wheels. Sort of like vector style. There's that grill, a custom one. Then here we've got our stock grill and hubcaps, plus the rear end. There's those really long velocity stacks sitting up here. Yeah, I'm not sure what those little bits are. Oh, they're probably bumperettes or something for a custom version. Now, I don't think this whole thing here, and the chrome console here, I don't think any of this was in the instruction sheet. However, it is pretty cool nonetheless. And next up we have our clear components, which of course, you know this is made in the 60s again because we've got our front windshield, then these long connectors going into the back rear window. And then we've got our little hooks here for it all to sort of more or less snap together into the body. And then we've got our two red tail lamps. So that's about it. Next we take a look at our tires and we've got actually two sets of tires going on here. The first of course is the custom tires which are the Goodyear Polyglass GT radials. And like I said in some of the other videos these tires originally came out from Goodyear in 1967 and they were a new technology which used the old bias ply tread construction with special polyglass reinforced belts that ran along the edge of the or the top of the tread on the inside and that provided better stopping distance and cornering abilities so these have been of course in a lot of amt kits because all these were made in like 1967 68 that sort of thing all the uh, muscle car ones of course and here you can see the nice tread and the Goodyear polyglass letters are raised on the tire so you can easily paint them with some white paint on a small brush. Over here we have our stock tires and these are Firestones. Now they don't say like Firestone Supreme or anything like that. They are narrow. They do have some nice tread pattern on here. Now I'll have to do a little research on this type of tire but I do think that AMT these would be 60s tires as well because in earlier kits this was a Firestone hat and you can see the tread on this old one goes all the way around there's no wavy lines or anything it has the pie crust type edge to it and then of course Firestone's in there somewhere whereas these ones are more rounded there's actually like a ridge inside them so you could paint a white wall in there Firestone is in here and then the tread pattern is wavy. So these ones are the ones that are in the 32 Fords and all that kind of stuff. And then these ones come in more of the 60s kits. And then of course you get a nice chrome plated steel axle. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the big reveal of our decal sheet. So let's just move our paper off here. And here we can see a big series of stripes for this car racing stripes. Now here you get a dark blue one with yellow edges, a yellow one, 
it's actually three colors. There's dark blue, a green, and then yellow in the middle, and then it comes back out again. You get this thick black stripe with two thin white uh, black stripes along the edge. This sort of multi-phase stripe, so thick black, thin, 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 thinner. Two white stripes, and then the reverse on the other side. So you could run two of these down the hood, or along the sides, or wherever you want them to be. And then we've got this little license plate, 00, or sorry, 85900. I tried to look for what state or wherever it was out of, but the writing up top is so tiny I couldn't really see. So anyway, it depends on where you want this thing to be from, but I'm sure with some of the new model kits from round two, there is a multitude of license plates you could put on this thing from anywhere. But these are the decals you'll get in this kit. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1969 Ford Galaxy hardtop. And if any of you have built this model kit in the past, please share it with us on our Facebook page, our Monster Hobbies Facebook page. We'd love to see your pictures and to hear about how you would like building this kit or maybe some of the things you found were a problem with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that model car review video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. And in order to know that you're the first ones to see it, remember to hit that notification bell and it will let you know when I make a new video. So if you love model cars and you want to go out and get some, don't forget to check out what's available right now at www.monster-hobbies.ca. You'll be glad that you did. And until next time, everybody, keep your wheels on the road.